Hey guys, Jim WT1W here. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I want to take a quick look at this little device. And I think you've seen these or seen me use these on the channel before, but I had to buy a new one because reasons that are not important. And I wanted to share with you what these little guys are. And I think this is something that needs to be in every ham toolbox. And honestly, more than one of these things. So this is an inline power meter. And this will keep a running total of power utilization. So the devices are not very expensive. I think $35 to $50, somewhere in there. And I'll put a link in the description below uh, for this particular device. And it'll be an Amazon affiliate link. I bought this out of my own money. Nobody sent this to me. So this one says that it's rated for 200 amps. And it is a Maker Fire. 200 amp upgraded with RC solar wind power e-bike new available made in China so what does this thing look like and what does it do and we're gonna hook it up here and, and do a quick demo of it too but this is the actual device and these come with a really cool screen protector on them which I just removed and this is designed to be hooked up to your power source on one side and your load on the other. And what makes these useful is not only does it show instantaneous readings of how much current or voltage, etc., but it also keeps track of aggregate or continuous readings. So if you are using your system, whatever you're using, anything, and this is um, rated for multiple voltage, and we'll take a quick look at the documentation in a second. But say you're out doing the POTA at the park with your battery. So this will show you not only what your radio is drawing on key up, but what it's drawing on idle. And the screen rotates among all the readings and it will keep up with how many watt hours, amp hours, peak voltage, so on and so forth that you've used since the device was powered on. Now this device has a couple of different things it can do. And it comes with this little kit with it with a set of power poles and connectors for the power leads themselves but it also comes with this small jumper and this can be used for an auxiliary battery to power the meter so that the meter itself is not drawing current off your main battery so you could use uh, a lower powered small battery to power this thing and it wouldn't be constantly drawing current off your main battery now this probably doesn't use enough that it matters but there you go. So anyway, there's our little our little jumper kit. I'm not going to fool with the little power wires. We're going to hook up the power poles and do a little testing on this. The documentation is thankfully one page, two sides, and it is large enough for an older person like myself to actually read. Now what I find interesting on this documentation that the box is listed at 200 amps but that kind of depends on the voltage that you're using. So you need to pay attention to the actual documentation. This talks about how to wire it, what it's going to display. It walks through all the different measurements and then explains what they are. So current, amps, and uh, voltage, how many watt hours, how much charge you've used, or amp hours, which is one you'd want to pay attention to if you were using this portable, for example and power how many watts and peak power so on and so forth so it shows you all that on the back it gives you a little bit of explanation on how it works and the things it will work with and some of the connections it explains these briefly in this these paragraphs up here and then gives you a little pictorial of the different ways that you can wire this device up and make your measurements and then down here at the bottom of course we have our specs and it measures 0 to 200 amps with a resolution of 0 0.1 amp, 0 to 60 volts, 0 to 65, 54 watts, 0 to 65 amp hours, and 0 to 55, 65, 54 watt hours. And so it will keep updating that as you go. Now, I know some of you are going, well, I have a 100 amp hour battery, and this only goes to 65 amp hours. That's how many amps over hours that you have drawn out of the battery. So I assume, and I'm not going to actually test this, 
when you hit 65 it might roll over to zero so if you're still using your 100 amp hour battery and have rolled this thing over to zero you have been lighting up the airwaves and maybe you should take a lunch break or go home in any case so that is the instructions for the device this is the jumper kit for the device i'm going to hook up power poles to it and we will do some quick measurements and see what all this thing will show us and what it can do stick around so here's our little kit and this is used over here on this side because depending on how you plug that in you can use an auxiliary battery and actually i believe yeah it's marked so positive negative and i assume that means no connection on this rightmost connector here so we're going to plug this in with the red to the right and then if i want to run a smaller battery for example to power the meter i can we're not going to fool with that today we'll use our meter power off of the actual source so now we have 45 amp power pole connectors so there is a limit even though the meter is listed at 200 amps i don't know that i would actually want to put 200 amps through this i have smoked one of these before i don't remember the exact details the connectors are pre-cut and tinned so it's a matter of putting on our power poles and getting our crimp on now a little tip here I've already screwed this up I can live with it but when you go to put these on you kind of want well I guess it's okay it's all right you kind of want these in the same direction so with this flat part on both of these set up the same way I got this one a little off axis a bit it'll twist and it'll be fine but you really really don't want to do these one up and one down because then it's not going to work very well so now when I put on my second connector and I'm gonna I do this with these big ones especially I put them in the crimper first but I want to have it oriented so it's pretty much the same way as the red one get my crimp in the crimpers first and then I get my device in there next and on these short wires and this thick wire this is a little complicated but there we have two really good crimps they're straight enough for government work straight enough for ham too and then if you've never put these things on and if you haven't used power poles you need to because they're cool these go in with this little tab at the bottom and the little hump on top and then you push it in straight and it clicks in place and you're good to go so then we'll do the black wire the same way and then if you want to and these wires are not cut the exact same length so there's no point and I wouldn't fool with it on this meter anyway these will actually interlock with each other they will stay together like that you can do that if you want I would have had to trim the wires and I didn't want to trim the wires so let's crimp our other two on and when we go to crimp these we're gonna again we're gonna put that in with a little tab goes down in the crimper like so so that the open part is up and the jaws can catch it And then holding our crimper, we're going to shove our wire in all the way up to the insulation and get a crimp on. And again, we have an excellent mechanical crimp. Let's do it one more time. Give it a squeeze. And now our second one is done. And I will tell you, it's a little off. So I must have twisted the wire. But again, I'm not going to hook these together. These are fine. I'm just going to keep them loose. We'll go ahead and put our connectors on like so on these shorter thick wires this is a little more difficult to keep everything straight and there we go okay here's our setup this is a small linear power supply I think this is about 10 amps 8 amps something like that we have our maker fire in line you'll see that this is our source on the left side here and this is our load on this side this is a Yaesu FT 1500M and it is hooked to a cell wave dummy load back off camera. 
And right now we're reading nothing because I'm supplying power from the power supply, which is off. Kick it on. And now it is going to rotate this display and show us what it's doing. And this resets every time this loses power. So that is part of the reason you might want to hook up an external battery on the little connector to keep these settings if you're making measurements over a long time. Because if this does lose power, these will all zero out all the cumulative readings. So this is currently what the radio is drawing, 0.19 amps. We've consumed not enough watt hours to matter. And our current wattage and our current voltage of our power supply. So that is what it's showing us. I'm trying to keep this at an angle where you can actually see it without the lights dimming it out. So now I'm going to key up the microphone and I am I am on FM going into again a dummy load. All right. Key up. And now we're drawing power and you can see we're pulling 2.9 amps. I've got the radio set to low power. This is a very small power supply. It is only a 7 amp PSU. So we are currently pulling 2.19 amps and our voltage has dropped to 13.8 on transmit. You can see us accumulating amp hours over here and our watt hours. The total amount of wattage we're pulling, I've let off the mic and you can see our power has gone down to two and a half watts on when I'm not keyed. So again, over the course of a day or some amount of time, this will keep accumulating these numbers. So if I start out with a fully charged I don't know, let's say a 20 amp hour battery for a, a POTA activation, I will know how much power I have drawn out of my 20 amp hour battery. So I can keep an eye on this and know when I'm either done for the day or it's about time to swap batteries. I won't be in the middle of a QSO and find out my battery just dropped below a threshold voltage and cut off. So this is a great way to keep up with that. It's a great way to look at the output on a power supply, the uses for this thing are numerous, and like I said, this should be a piece of every ham's kit. So let me key up one more time. And you can see we have gone up to 2.19 amps and 30 watts. And we're still at 13.8 volts on key up. And then I can't remember specifically what AP means. I think that's the peak. That's our voltage minimum. And that is our peak wattage. This is our current wattage. This is the cumulative amp hours. That is our current wattage still. And those numbers will update as we use the device. So again, this works for anything. And this one comes with bare wires. As you saw, it also came with a power pole kit. I went ahead and hooked up the power pole kit because that's how I typically use these. But this has a lot of uses and this is a great way to keep up with a battery box, for example, or just a plain battery or whatever you're using to do your mobile activation or field day if you're actually running on battery power during field day. Guys, that's all I've got for today. Again, I will put a link to this little dingus in the description below. I appreciate you all watching. Make sure and give me a thumbs up. Share this with your friends. And if you are not, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. All that stuff is right below. Thank you very much, y'all. 73. Have a good one.